target every ballistic ballistic reticle turned off. Now, uh, let's say the targets are known. So in this case, they work, but this is the function you need to move. Look how that moves. Look how that moves. And welcome back to Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews. Today we're going to be reviewing the Sig Sauer Sierra 3 BDX Combo. This is the 6.5 to 20 by 52 with the Kilo 2400 BDX rangefinder. This is the combo. It retails for about 1,600, but you can find it pretty much on all the websites for about 1,400. So just keep that in mind, shop around, find the best price. Anyway, uh, this optic is kind of in the category of the smart optics because it has a ton of features that are really, really amazing that you're gonna want to know. Anyway, the other comparable optics that are in this kind of field were the Zeiss DI Dia range, which discontinued, uh, the Nikon Laser IRT, which is discontinued. Next, there was the Bushnell Yardage Pro, Another one that's discontinued with not nearly as many cool features. Uh, and lastly, but I think it's lastly, is the Burris Eliminator 3, which doesn't have quite as many neat features as this one. <laughs> so, and it's a little bit more expensive too. And this one's a higher magnification. Anyway, that aside, let's first just take a look at the rangefinder range finder in itself, because alone this rangefinder retails for about 960 if you buy it alone. So, uh, but it actually is really interesting in the features that it has, just as an individual component. Um, it is a rangefinder. It can range find, they claim up to 3,000, 3,000, they claim up to 3,400 yards, but I'm pretty sure the actual distance is far more conservative than that. I've actually used it up to 1,400 meters, and then it had a little bit of a trouble trying to actually pick up the, the distance, but it did. So anyway, other than that, that's its kind of basic function. Once, if you have the BDX app, which um, you would, in order to benefit from this, you would put in your bullet weight, your ballistic coefficient, and your muzzle velocity. Those are the three key elements you are going to need to know. And well, the wind, but yeah. Next, uh, you would range find, and let's just forget about this optic for now. You, let's say you don't have it, and all you have is this range finder. You have a standard optic with regular tracking. If you range find, let's say up to um, 600 meters, right in this range finder, you will see, it'll tell you 16 MOA up, three MOA left based on the wind. So it'll tell you in here what you need to adjust, even if you don't have this optic. Now, if you do have this optic, this can communicate directly onto the reticle and you will see an illuminated point appear on the Y axis of the, the, this reticle. Now, if you have inputted the wind in the, uh, the app, you'll also see a little illumination appear on the x-axis of this reticle. So that's one of the ways you can kind of manage the rangefinder optic. Uh, the other way is manually inputting distances in the app, which the, uh, the, the little illumination points will remain constant on the reticle. Okay, so you can have your crosshair set at 100, your next point at 200, 300, 400, 500, 600. So, and as you magnify, well, these points will obviously get larger to compensate for the magnification change. So regardless that it's a second focal plane optic, that does not negatively affect you at all. Now you might be worried because this is an electronic optic. It's kind of like a smart optic. Uh, your battery is gonna die. Um, no, the battery will actually last 20,000 hours, which I don't even know how many lifetimes that is. So don't worry about uh, battery life. Um, they kind of have you covered. Now, if we were to look at this optic as a, you know, just compare it to any regular optic and kind of overlook all of its fancy electronic components, it would be a pretty basic optic. For example, it, with these turrets, which they're actually very positive, but not all that audible, it only has 40 MOAs worth of internal adjustments, which is something you may need to know. So if you have a zero MOA rail on your scope, you'll be fine. If you have a 20 MOA rail on your rifle, you'll be fine. If you have a 30 MOA rail on your rifle, you won't be fine because it only has 40, which if it's optically centered, uh, means you have 20 to go up, 20 to go down. Now, if your, uh, your rail is 30, well, then that would leave you a negative 10, which it just doesn't work. You're gonna need either a, a 20 MOA rail or a, ideally a zero MOA rail. Keep that in mind just to let you know you may have issues if you have that type of uh, rail. So 
This optic has multiple settings of illumination depending on whatever environment you're in, if it's dawn, dusk, and plain day, and all that stuff. It has this MOTAC option, which uh, essentially motion activation. So this optic will kind of automatically shut off until you, oh, you pick it up again because, uh, I don't know, something's coming, whatever. So then it'll just turn itself back on. Also, you have the automatic time off, which it'll just automatically shut off, a hard shut off after about 30 minutes. So I actually had left this one since I received it. I, I left it in my safe on for about, I think it's been two weeks and then I just pulled it out for this little intro and I realized it was on and I just noticed the reticle was still on. So that can tell you that, you know, you don't really have to worry about the battery. It's good to go. For this review, we're gonna be reviewing the scope and the rangefinder as a combo. We're gonna look at just how accurate this optic is. Now, beyond just testing it at 100 meters, we're gonna take it to 300 and 500 meters. I really wanna see just how good this ballistic reticle is in conjunction with the rangefinder. We're gonna see, does it survive recoil of a 308, 168 grain boat tail hollow points? We're gonna look at the glass quality. Now they're saying this has a fully multi-coated optics and some HD lenses, so this should be some pretty darn clear glass. Focus parallax, the turrets. Now the turrets, they only have 40 MOA. Normally it's kind of modest, but they really only serve one purpose, is to get you zeroed. After that, you cap them and forget them. The ballistic reticle does all the work after that. We're gonna look at the eye relief, which, I mean, it has a lot. We're gonna look at the reticle, the warranty, and lastly, ease of use. Smart optics need to be easy to use or else, I mean, they're kind of redundant. So we're gonna find out just how awesome this optic really is. Let's get to the range. Now, as we always do, we're gonna set one group out at 100 meters, then we'll move to 300. We're just gonna see. All right, so we can clearly see that I'm zeroed. Now let's try 300 meters, because that's really where the rubber meets the road. Uh, the ballistic reticle is off currently, which means whatever I range is what the where is the illumination that's going to show up on the, the the reticle. Now, one thing I do want to input is the uh, wind. It's going to be something that's quite necessary today. Although at 300 meters, the wind isn't going to affect my. 168 grain boat tail hollow point all that much. Uh, I'm going to change this from, I don't do miles per hour. With miles per hour is 2.2 of kilometers and it's about 15 kilometers an hour wind, so that's seven and a half. And it's coming from the nine o'clock position. So you can set up all of these things in the range finder option of the, the phone. So. Uh, let's range find because it's not set up in my reticle. There's just a little light on the in the crosshair Now I need to get the correct range 299 so That steel plate is at 299 and exactly like it should I have a, a point that appears on my x-axis of the reticle Which I mean I'm gonna show you guys later and then I also have one that appears on the y So I just play connect the docks. It's that simple I'm gonna now we're ready to go. Hit! And that's exactly where I aimed. Now, I mean, hitting at 300 meters is really nothing special. But my crosshairs are completely about a whole, I don't know. Let me just check that out. I'd say a good six inches to the left of exactly where uh, where the dot is on the on the x-axis. So just keep that in mind. If I had a regular scope, and I don't understand wind, because honestly, I don't, I would not be hitting that plate at all. That, that shot would not be possible. So this is actually a really cool feature. <laughs> all right, so we've hit it three times. You shouldn't be particularly impressed. This is 300 meters. Now we're gonna try 500. Well. Not this one, but in about a second. I'm just gonna shoot this one shot. Yay! All right, 
500 meters, let's go. All right, let's do it. I'm actually really excited. <sighs> Set my parallax. Uh, oh, I have to rearrange, obviously. All right, so even in the reticle, it's actually telling me if I was using a standard scope, it's telling me I should adjust 19.2 MOA up and 5.1 MOA left. <laughs> and it also shows the degree of inclination. So it, it figures all that out for you. Get my ears on and let's, let's see if I can do it. Ha! <laughs> I hit it! I am, I'm surprised. I mean, it's not that I've never hit it 500 meters. But I've never hit with this much wind, which for some of you is like, ah, it's nothing for wind. But for me, it's like, wow, I hit it. That's cool. This is awesome. <laughs> Let's hit it again. Ah, oh, I didn't get it that time. I was, I held a little bit, I undercompensated for the wind. That time I was dead on. I mean, really, this optic is is really designed for compensating. Is that a deer? Huh, way out there, there's a deer that shows up. He always shows up when I'm shooting. I don't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what's coming. Well, actually, it's I can't shoot him in this area with rifles. But anyway, uh, this rifle is really designed to fill in the experience gap. For example, I have no experience with wind. But if there's no wind, yes, I can hit it 500 meters. With wind, I'm completely useless. I would have never figured that I have to hold left. And even using the apps, I've, I've found, well, not this one actually, but other apps, I found that they actually didn't, didn't work like it should. So anyway, let's hit it again. <laughs> again, theoretically, that would be a kill shot on, on a deer. Yeah, in theory. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I'm really impressed. This is really for hunters that want to go you know, a step further. And if you're using a standard rifle, I would just be wounding the deer. I, if, if I were just aiming dead on and just uh, compensating for uh, elevation, I probably would be missing it entirely or just hitting it in the gut, which I mean, we all know what that does. I think I just glanced at that time because it didn't really, it didn't really whack too hard. I'm hitting it a little bit low. So like I said, the important thing is you need to make sure if you're using this setup is uh, your velocity. That's that's massively important. Uh, last weekend I was out here and I was aiming, I think I was aiming at 700 meters and I kept missing every time and I was getting pretty furious, frustrated. I wasn't furious, frustrated. And I went to go check and all my shots were in one good cluster about a good uh, 24 inches below, actually more like 12, 12 inches below. And what that told me is that my velocity was way off. And I kind of figured that because I think the battery was getting low in the, the Caldwell um, uh, chron chronograph. So I kind of went with what I assumed it was and obviously I was wrong. This time I rechecked my velocity and I mean, we're hitting every time at 500. So if you ask me, that's pretty good. With all this wind, it's doing all the work for me. Do you have any more in there? No, we don't. So, so for 500 meters, good job, six hour. Honestly, I'm pretty impressed. Uh, for 300 and 500 meters, if there was no wind, I mean, that would be far less impressive, but with 15 kilometers an hour to 22 kilometers an hour gusts of wind, that's pretty good. So for accuracy, I'm gonna give it a five out of five. For recoil, it survived just fine, five out of five. For the glass quality, have a look for yourselves. So this is what it looks like at 300 meters, and this is how you would aim. And this is at 600. This is at 6.5 magnification. This is at 20. Quite clear.
For the last quality, they're saying this has some HD lenses and it's fully multi-coated, as it should in this price range. Honestly, I felt that was quite clear. We're gonna give it a five out of five. For the Focus Parallax, now it has some really grippy things that stick out and it's really smooth, really nice and easy to use. The numbers do correspond to the distance indicated. So we're gonna give it a five out of five. Now that's a lot of five out of five so far. So, but I mean, this is a pretty nice optic. For the turrets, now, usually turrets are far more important than this. But in this situation, the turrets serve one purpose, is to get you zeroed and well, to survive recoil. Once they're zeroed, the ballistic reticle does all the work. There's no dialing. I mean, technically you could. I mean, and there, there's numbers on these turrets if you really wanted to. Maybe for example, your battery dies, which I mean, they've survived 20,000 hours. So I mean, it technically wouldn't. <laughs> but anyway, physically you could. Not that you would want to, because you have this awesome ballistic reticle to do the work for you. So there's that. Uh, anyway, we're gonna do a box test as usual. We're gonna see if there's a point of impact change with magnification. Very important things in testing optics. Let's get to it. Let's start with the box test. This is also gonna validate whether the turrets actually, uh, you know, match the distance indicated on. This is 20 MOA per revolution, and it has a total of 40 MOA's worth of internal adjustment. So let's go, let's see. 10 MOA's worth of internal adjustment. Let's see if there's a point of impact change with the magnification. All right, next, let's see how much internal adjustment it has. As I said earlier, it should have 40 MOA's worth of internal adjustment. That's it. And that's it. Back to zero. That's it. And that's it. Now the turrets feel very positive. They're not that audible. So for the turrets, we're not gonna remove any points just because it has 40 MOAs of internal adjustment. Just make sure you have a either zero MOA rail or a 20 MOA rail. No 30 MOA rails on this, or you'll have to zero this optic at much further distances. So for the turrets, five out of five. Uh, next is the eye relief. This one has a ton of eye relief. I mean, this gives me a full clear picture. And this is on the, oh, it's only at 14. This gives me a full clear picture at 20 magnification. And at 6.5, I have a full picture here. The eye box is fairly forgiving, which is good. Could be a little bit better, but it's decent. So we're gonna give that a four out of five. Next is the reticle. Now the reticle is something that, you know, I'm, I'm kind of iffy on. Uh, it's a second focal plane. My concern is it's a little chunky. I don't think they can make it any thinner because I mean, you have uh, illumination points that, that appear on this thing. You have to make them, you have to make them to about to that size. I don't think they can technically make it much smaller. For that reason, I would give it a four out of five, but you know what, have a look for yourselves. You guys can make your own judgments on this. Now for the warranty. Their electronic optics have a lifetime warranty, which is really nice to give you some peace of mind knowing if anything, anything ever happens, they got you covered. And lastly is the ease of use, which is probably one of the most important parts of this optic. If this smart optic and, well, rangefinder isn't easy to use, I might not be interested. But this one, I'm gonna give it a four out of five for the following reasons. It has a ton of features in this, um, but you have to be familiar with the terminology. So ballistic coefficient, if you're not a reloader, maybe that means nothing to you. Well, that kind of refers to how aerodynamic a projectile is. You will need to know the ballistic coefficient of the projectile that's leaving your barrel. You're also gonna to need to know the muzzle velocity. You can either borrow someone's chronograph or there's even a feature in this optic, which is a little bit more complex to do, but you can get your own muzzle velocity that way. Uh, you're gonna select the bullet weight. You're gonna put that in the rangefinder option of the app so it can calculate the bullet drop efficiently for you. 
These are all a lot of cool features and there's a ton more. So if your optic is slightly canted, there's an, a feature in this, uh, well, the, the phone, in the optic, that'll start illuminating on the left side to tell you, hey, you gotta tilt it back to the left, which is really cool. You can adjust the degree that you want it to notify you at, like five degrees, 2.5, or I think it even goes to one. I mean, that's pretty awesome. There is a kinetic, fe kinetic feature, which essentially, if you turn that on, if you're hunting at long range, that's like, I don't know, 1,200 yards with maybe 150 grain, it'll tell you that this is an ethical shot based on the ballistic coefficient of the bullet you're using. So it has some kind of red light that illuminates to kind of you let you know that, hey, this isn't a good shot, get closer. I mean, there's a lot of functions in here that you can learn to get to know, but the basic ones are fairly easy to learn and easy to understand. So I would give that a four out of five. So what do I really think of this optic? I think it's a really nice optic for the price. There isn't much competition. The glass quality is nice. And you know what? It figures out the wind for you. You don't even have to learn wind. You just connect the dots, pull the trigger, provided you have good trigger control and you know the fundamentals down, you should be good to go. Uh, and you know what? If 1,400 is not in your budget, there's the more reasonably priced four to 14 by 44 with the rangefinder combo. That might be a better option for you. Personally, I like the high magnification, so. <laughs> so if you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys liked the review, consider hitting like, consider hitting subscribe, and I'll see you on the next review. Oh, additionally, in a separate video, you guys are gonna see a full length video on how to set up the optic in the app and the rangefinder in the app, how to pair them, and this will be step-by-step, -step, really easy to use. Anyway, I'll see you next time on Affordable Optics and Rifle Reviews.